G'day everyone and welcome to Self Reliance Australia. So I'm doing this intro from down the beach today. I thought I'd do something a little bit different, get out, enjoy, well, it was sunny, you can probably see it starting to rain, um, but I just love being down near the beach. But look, the video this week is about how I get around lifting really, really heavy stuff. Now, it's, it is a challenge for anyone that's out on property because quite often we're on our own or we might just have someone else, one other person to help lift things. Um, and when you have really heavy stuff, um, it's just dangerous. You, you'll hurt yourself or the door back or get crushed or something along those lines. So today is about um, a couple of tool chests that I needed to move out of the enclosure I had for our dingoes. And I want to move them up into the shed because I had some other got some other plans coming to go into the dingo enclosure and uh, so sort of a climbing apparatus for them. Um, but anyway, so I've got these tool chests which I inherited from my dad and they still have a lot of tools in them. So they're very heavy. They're made out of steel um, and they're full of tools. So um, one of them's probably close to 300 kilos all, all loaded up, maybe a bit more, probably about that. But there's no way that two of us are going to lift it. So um, let's go have a look. Let's get into it. So the first step in moving this equipment was actually getting it out of the enclosure. Now they're on wheels which is very helpful so it makes it a lot easier to move around on flat ground but to move it 100 metres up the paddock becomes a little bit more problematic. So I also had a couple of toolboxes. So this is actually a toolbox that my dad made himself uh, even though he's a car he's quite good at his metal work as well. So not very heavy and not that hard to move around. And this is an old gun safe that I, I'm pretty sure he made out of you know three ton steel but it weighs incredible a lot um, but again easy enough to well, you could move it with two people reasonably safely without actually having to use the lifting equipment so initially i thought maybe we'd be able to because they are, they are on wheels they'll be able to use use the ramps and actually push them off the ramp onto the trailer but unfortunately the rubber i guess the rubber tires or the hard rubber outside of the wheels had, had come off because it's they just went old and got hard and they cracked and fell off so we were literally metal on metal so what i used was this now this is you know some people call it a block and tackle some people call it an endless chain now this has been worth its weight in gold now i only actually bought this because of these tool chests so when we moved them down from the other side of the country we had to obviously lift them up off the ground and get them into the trailer before we moved them um and so i knew i'd have to also move them at the other end when i got back home to get them off the trailer so i went out and purchased a block and tackle now they're not super expensive considering what they do as a tool i think this cost me somewhere about 150 dollars maybe 200 dollars tops i think um, but this can lift a ton and it makes makes the really heavy items actually very light to lift because all you're doing is pulling on the chain and through the use of the pulleys that work in the system, it becomes very easy to do, as you can see. Now this is where you do need to be careful. So that yellow strap that goes around the tool chest um, is just one big circular piece of strapping, but that is rated to three ton. So you need to be very careful. It's not just like I'm getting some rope here. I'm distributing the weight because, you know, each side's got the two, two pieces to it so I can spread those out a little bit. But now I did get these, try to get that in the middle as best as I could to keep it balanced. Now, thankfully, those tool chests were reasonably well balanced as far as the loading of them goes. Now, that was probably more by accident than good design, to be to be honest. Um, so by putting the strap in the middle, it did keep it fairly, fairly even. But one of the challenges, and this is where the extra set of hands really becomes important, is that when you're lifting it up, like for me as I was lifting it up, if the weight's not perfectly even, the extra, the extra set of hands from having someone helping you, you can just keep that chest. You can see, see um, my brother-in-law, they're just actually just keeping it a little bit balanced because it wasn't perfectly flat as we lifted it up. The other danger is that as it lifts up, if that isn't perfectly flat and perfectly even and you get it tilt, that it can slide on that strap and then smash or the crush someone underneath it or just fall onto the floor and, and smash everything inside and everything around it as well. So there are some dangers in doing this. Like technically, if I wanted to be super, super safe, 
I would have done a strap lengthways as well as widthways and get that nice even fulcrum point in the middle. However, having done it at the like loading it at the other end um, with my brother originally, I knew that these were fairly well balanced and I knew that it was reasonably it was actually reasonably safe to do it this way. Now I know some people will probably say that you know it's not super safe and you know I'm not going to disagree with that. Um, but I knew what was in there, I knew how it well was balanced and I also knew the rating of the straps because you can see the rating of the straps actually printed on the straps which is like 10 times the weight of the cases um, so it was all reasonably good. The other thing I'm doing here is actually reversing the trailer underneath the tool chest so I wasn't swinging the tool chest on that chain and on that block and tackle. Now what we did then, I reversed the trailer underneath it then we lowered it back down onto the trailer, disconnecting and just pushed it forward. So that way that is always nice and even. I was never trying to get that balance of that tool chest to shift or the weight to shift in the balance of it as it was up in the air and resting just on that one strap. Now, again, that might be different if you had the, the fulcrum and the, and the four points around you know, lengthways and widthways, um, but I didn't do that. So I wanted to make sure that we stayed as safe as possible. So I reversed the trailer up underneath and then once we disconnected it, it's just a matter of sliding it up to the front. Now we're not going very far, I'm just originally going 100 meters up to the shed, so I'm not even going on any roads except for the driveway. So that was a good way to do it. And that's nice and safe in there now. And once we get the other one in, it doesn't isn't going to move anywhere. So once we did the first one, which really didn't take that long, like we're talking a couple of, probably a few minutes really. Um, and the first one took a few minutes because we we're sort of working out you know, the good balance point and working together, working what was safe and what wasn't safe. Um, then we just rinse and repeat and did it a second time. Now, I talked about being able to lift these easily. Like, even though these tool chests, like this one that I'm doing now at the moment is probably a little bit lighter, but that first one was would have been, you know, close to that 300, if not a little bit more, 300 kilos. Um, but look, just pulling on that chain, you're not lifting it very fast, so you're not lifting it very high on each pull of the chain. And the, with the pulley system, it becomes very, very easy to use and, and lift up by using just pulling down on the chain. But also because you're standing up straight, you're not bending your back, you're not bringing your back at risk. So it becomes a very, very safe way to lift extremely heavy equipment. Now you can get heavier rated block and tackles, you can get heavier rated straps. So you can lift pretty much anything you like through using this pulley system. Now the key to this also is, you may have seen the eyelet that I bolted into the ceiling that I connected to the block and tackle to originally. That is also a rated eyelet. So you don't want to use a mild steel one, for example, if it's not rated. So that's rated, um, I think, to a thousand kilograms, so a ton. Um, and then just put the bolt on the top and you, it comes with special bolts and all that sort of stuff as well. So what you don't want to do is use your really great block and tackle and your really great strap and have it on a non-rated eyelet because if that lets go because it's not rated then you're still going to be really hurt when it crushes you underneath so the key is to make sure everything that's in that chain whether it's the chain it's the eyelet or the block and tackle it connects to or the strap make sure they're all rated for the appropriate weight that you want to do So once we made some room to bring the trailer in and move things around a bit, it's just a, re a case of reversing the process. So again, I had to hop up on the ladder, put the block and tackle up on the on the ceiling or on the roof of the shed, uh, and then strap strap the tool chest back up, take them off, and look very similar process. Um, lifted them up, drove the trailer forward, lowered them down, moved them across. Um, but this time, when we moved them on the floor. I didn't actually roll these on the floor up in the shed because as you know I'm a little bit OCD about the quality of the finish on my floor because it's nicely sealed and you can go watch that video on how I sealed the concrete floor. Um, but now because the, the hard rubber um, tyres had broken off on this it would have really just dug grooves into the concrete. So what I did I got a little dolly like there on wheels as you can see I'm rolling it around on that and then I put some blocks of wood underneath that for the for that tool chest to sit on. Now the plan is to put some new wheels on so then I can move them around um, but that will be down the track but 
for today to get them off the trailer and into the shed. Basically, I just put them on some wheels and, and moved it off to the side wall. So there are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind when you're purchasing a block and tackle or you know your endless chain, whatever you want to call it. Um, the first one obviously is going to be the rating. So how much weight do you want to lift with it? I bought a one ton block and tackle because I knew that would do me for everything that I believe that I need to lift and will look like lifting. Because uh, any more than that, and you know, I'm going to need extra people to help me with balancing and all that sort of stuff. But I knew one ton was plenty for what I was lifting here. Now the other part of that puzzle is how long do you want the chain to be? So I knew that the roof of my shed was going to be 3.6 to 4 metres high. Um, but I also knew that these were roughly about a metre off the ground. So I bought one of a 3 metre chain. But also the straps give me a little bit of extra length as well if I'm lifting something. So I knew that a 3 metre chain was going to be plenty. Now you can buy them at 4, 5, 6 metre lengths. Which I think I had the option of a 3 or a 6 metre length. But the 3 metre was perfect for what I wanted to do. So it's just something to keep in mind when you go about purchasing your own. So that's the last one being rolled into place. And losing that little dolly underneath makes it very easy. But look, that was the final spot that we've got them into for the day. Now that won't be their final resting spot. I do plan to move them um, into my work area, as you've seen in the shed before. Uh, but before I do that, I'll replace the wheels underneath, so I'm not going to damage the floor when I move them around. But also, um, I'll be able to move them more easily in the future, and I'll have the locks on the wheels, so when I do use them, they will be stable and solid. But also, I like to put a different top across the top, so it become more like a workbench as well as a tool chest. So overall, I'm just really happy that I've got them up in the shed. Uh, it took a bit of work. I definitely needed an extra set of hands to do it. Also needed some a dry weekend when I had someone around um, because I can't access that through the middle of winter when it gets wet. Um, but look, yeah, now I can go through them, find out what's in there, but also repack the tools I use on a regular basis into those tool chests so I can use them in a way that suits the type of work that I do in the shed. So there you go, another job is done. Look, I'm really happy I've got the tool chest up into the shed. Um, I might actually do a video on like the Aladdin's cave, I suppose, what, what's actually in them. Um, look, I haven't looked in them for a couple of years since I've brought them back, really. Um, they've been in the DM enclosure. I've had the doors, you know, up against the wall so they couldn't chew on the doorknobs on the little handles and stuff and, you know, try and break their way in. So the, it's actually still cage that was facing the dingoes. Um, so I actually haven't been in there to see what's actually in there for a long time. So it'll be interesting to see what is actually in there. But look, if you've enjoyed that, please give us the big thumbs up. And you know, if you haven't already, please subscribe. It helps the channel to grow. And I really do appreciate that. Also, really appreciate everyone's comments. Um, I do read them all and reply to all of them. So thank you very much for that. And until next time, I'll see you then.